Here at The Shack, we'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this video, my good friends at PCBWay. They'll be helping us out with our PCB fabrication needs and offer a very professional and high quality service for extremely reasonable prices. They can even populate your PCBs for you if you're tired of waving a hot iron around. There's a link to their website in the description where you can check out all of the amazing services they offer. Now, back to the show. Hi everyone and welcome back to the shack for part 2 of our Omega MSX2 compatible machine designed by Sergei Kizilev. That's Omega, not Amiga, as I may have said at one point in the last video. Not convinced, but it does sound like that. If you recall at the end of the last video, all of the soldering was complete on the main board itself and we just had to populate the ICs and power it up. Well, let's rip that band-aid off. I did that and it doesn't work. Just a completely black screen saying no signal. The culprit turning out to be this Z80 where a Z80 should be, which is pretty annoying. So I've ordered a new one of those. And while I was at it, I also decided to put an order in for all of the actual logic chips as stated on the board as the ready to go kit I got from a seller on eBay, whilst consisting of working chips, at least those I could test on my TL866, did contain a lot of alternates, which could cause me further issues. So while the new Z80 and Logic chips are winging their way to me from Texas, what can we be getting on with? Well, why don't we get the keyboard put together and then take a look at the case? Then hopefully all we have to do in part three is pop our new ICs in and start having a good old mess around. Oh, and some help needed from you guys later too. So, to the keyboard. These are Cherry MX key switches. They pop in like this. Have two solder joints on the back and then repeat 72 more times. A couple of chips and caps, a few resistors and a few diodes later and you have this all ready for the keycaps to go on. There are two special key switches here, the cap shift and the function key. These are illuminated switches and were quite hard to come by. So thanks to Sam Jewell for sending these in along with some resistors, much appreciated. Many thanks also to Jeffrey Burrell, who supplied some of the crystal resonators for the board. Really very generous and very much appreciated too. So with all of this soldering done, let's pop our keycaps on. We've got three different sets of keycaps as I wanted to get a real retro feel and a lot of the older machines had multiple colours on their keyboards. Think Commodore 64, BBC Micro, Amstrad, CPC, etc. I'm thinking white keys for the main alphanumerics, orange for the function keys and some accents and grey for the others. So let's get to it and see how it looks. Well, I think that's proper retro looking. What do you think? And of course, I've got enough keys left over to make another couple of these in different versions if I fancy a change at some point. Let's turn our attention to the case, which I found on Thingiverse. There's a link in the description. This was designed by Javier Abadia, which again, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing, who according to his Thingiverse page is also located on Melee Island. I wonder if he knows Guybrush. He's done a couple of cases for this Omega, including one based on the SVI 728, but I was drawn to this one as it just looks so MSX. The Japanese MSX machines were all a bit funky in their design and this case really evokes that feeling. PCBWay again helped with this by 3D printing it for me and as you may expect, their results far outstrip anything I could have produced at home. It really does look and more importantly feel like a properly manufactured part. It all bolts together with these M3 bolts and that makes it a very sturdy piece. Thank you. 
I also printed this keyboard support piece as well as the cartridge trap doors and I'll probably try and find or design a plastic surround for the cartridge ports too so we don't get bits falling through here onto the mainboard when we put cartridges in and out. Well I think that looks actually quite cool as it is, but this is where I need your help for the final part of this series, which will be a bit longer to make up for this one being a bit shorter due to those chip shenanigans and the delivery times over Christmas and New Year. I need to know what colour I should paint this case to go with a new keyboard. Lemon et no, no, okay, okay. I'll be posting a poll on the community tab on the channel page, so please do pop by and vote, and yes, lemon will not be an option. So that's where we'll leave it for this episode and apologies again that we didn't get as far as I'd hoped over Christmas. What with the setbacks and me getting more than a little merry, the shack took a back seat and I'm sure you'll forgive me that. I hope you've enjoyed the video anyway. If so, please like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications of new content. Please leave your comments below as we do read every single one of them. And until next time in the shack, it's goodbye from me.